huge chunk of fish. Peter comes to Jesus and he humbles himself. And the Bible says, he gets on his knees and he says, Jesus, depart from me. This is an interesting way to handle success. I have never heard one man handle success in such a way where when they got success, it actually humbled them. Success makes people head swallow. Success makes people nose go up. Success makes people say, you know what? Uh, I'm wise. Look what I did. But the Bible says when success came to Peter's life, success made him actually more humble. When success makes you more humble, your trouble make you strong, will make you stronger. Our success is not the same way the world has success. Our success is done for the glory of God, not for our own glory. The Bible says, let men see your good works and glorify the Father. Not crappy works. Coming late to work is not a good work. And leaving early is not a good work. And getting fired for being on Facebook instead of doing a job is not a good work. And not doing a good job at your work is not a good work. People won't praise you for good talking. People won't praise you because we post good stuff on Facebook, good quotes we copy from somebody else. They can click like on your Facebook. They will not praise God for good quotes. They will praise God for great performance. They will praise God when we give our best and we say, God, we will serve you and we want to achieve success. Why? So your name can get glorified and so we can get humbled by it, not our head get swollen by it in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. When we handle success differently than the world, we handle success with humility and we handle success with glorifying God. If we handle success in that way, our trouble and our trials we will handle in a different way as well. Our trouble we will handle in a way that will strengthen our faith, in a way that won't break our faith, in a way that won't crush us because when trouble and trials come into this world, it destroys them, it puts them in depression mode. But the Bible says in Psalms, it was good for me that I got afflicted, David said that I will know your statues. How could you have this view of affliction, David? Why? Because I know nothing in my life happens without a reason. And even when affliction, even when hardships come into my life, even when difficulty come into my life, I know that I know that I know that it comes also to purify my faith and strengthen my desire and to bring me closer to Jesus Christ. And if I have this attitude toward the trouble, when success comes, it won't get me out of my road. It will actually humble me because I will say, God, oh my gosh, this, this, this is great. This is amazing, God. Wow. It's for your glory. They asked Joel Osteen. When Joel Osteen came to the meeting of four or five hundred pastors. And Joel Osteen is the pastor of a largest church. And some of you have your own opinion about it. Stick with it um, and stuff. And has 46,000 people in this church. The largest church in the United States. Did not go to Bible seminary. Uh, preaches a positive gospel encouragement all this stuff. They asked 400 pastors. Asked him this one question. They said, how did you do it? How did you do it? The largest church in the United States. You don't have this deep, deep stuff. You're a simple guy. How you, do you do it? And Joel Osteen started to cry. And he said, guys, I don't know. He sat down. And they asked him again, come on. We came for the conference to hear you say, how did you do it? The largest church in America. And he got up again and he says, people tried to copy my sermons. It didn't, happen. it didn't work for them. People tried to copy my style and my smile. It didn't work for them. People copied our music. It didn't work for them. He says, I don't know. He says, I'm really humbled by it. Honestly, God's view of success is when it humbles you, not exalts you. Amen. God says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 to Israelites, when you go into the promised land and you will get wells and you will get houses and you will get riches and you will get everything, he says, don't forget. Don't forget my hand. And he says, don't say that my hand and my might has brought this to me. But he says, remember it is God who gave you the power. Today we look in our country and honestly I look at my life sometimes and I see people who are struggling in the areas of life where I'm not struggling and it's so easy to take your finger and point and say you know what you're making bad decisions and I am making right decisions 
The reason why I'm prospering is because I made right decisions. The reason why I'm healthy today is because I don't eat french fries and I fast and I pray and, and I do all these things and I have a great health. The reason why I don't have car accidents is because I drive safe. What you don't realize is the reason why you got it is because God gave you power. It wasn't you, it wasn't your intelligence, it wasn't your discipline, it wasn't your strength, it wasn't your power, and it wasn't your wisdom. My friend, we have to stop putting the finger to ourselves and saying, it's because of me. We have to say, God, you gave it and you can take it away. Because if this is the attitude we have towards success, when the trouble comes into our life, when a hardship comes into our life, we'll be like Job. We'll get on our knees and say, God, I don't understand this. This is painful. This is unexplainable. But I trust you. And this will purify my faith. And this will make me stronger, closer to you, Jesus. And you'll bring me out. And it's going to be for your glory. Can I hear an amen this morning?